Fake shot inside. That was my mistake, but Alenia gets lucky. And oh my goodness, he does it again. Carlos Alenia with the chip shot. I'm not really sure what's going to happen. I just go down the middle because I didn't know what to do. And thankfully, Courtois uh, went to the left, I guess. And Messi took complete advantage of that. 1-0 Barcelona. In So welcome back to another episode of the Barcelona Career Mode series. This is episode number 10 and I'm not gonna lie, it's actually crazy that we're already 10 episodes into this one. Today's episode though is massive because we've got the final of the Spanish Super Cup as we'll be going up against Atletico Madrid. Last episode we knocked out Real Madrid in the semi-finals and here we are in the finals. Spanish Super Cup, our chance to win our very first trophy of the season. We are also in in the January trans window which means there is a good chance there will be signings in this episode so should be exciting so if you guys are enjoying at this Barcelona career mode series make sure to drop a like on the video let's smash out 2,000 likes once again and I'll get you guys an episode tomorrow let's keep the support coming and if you are new around here make sure to subscribe for more FIFA 20 career mode content also recently I did a FIFA 20 giveaway on Twitter and I plan on doing more giveaways on both Twitter and Instagram Instagram. So if you guys are interested in winning a free copy of FIFA 20, make sure to follow my social channels. Link to Twitter as well as Instagram will be in the description below. Probably sometime in October, I plan on doing another giveaway. Press conference time. And if you guys want to get involved, drop in your questions down in the comment section below. Let's get this one underway. First question, you should loan out Tordibo for development. That is something I'm not going to be doing because I feel like having Tordibo as our fifth choice center back does offer us a lot of squad depth and that's why I don't want to sell him and also he's doing pretty well here at Barca especially in terms of player growth he's gone from a 71 rating to a 74 and his stats are going up massively which is what we want to see and also let's not forget the Spanish Cup is yet to begin I think end of January the Spanish Cup begins now they've I think changed the fixture scheduling which means in these kind of games Tordibo will certainly be getting opportunities and that's why I think we need to keep him and not loan him out Next question, who do you think will have a better future at Barcelona, Ansu Fati or Ricky Puig? I think in real life, it has to be Ansu Fati. It seems like the club trusts him. He's already a part of the first team setup and he's only 16, but as Ricky Puig still plays for the B team, and there's just something about Ansu Fati that makes me think he's going to be really big for Barcelona in the future. I mean, Ricky Puig has that special talent as well, but Ansu Fati, everything seems to be working out perfectly for him. So I'm going to go for him. Even in this series, guys, I think Ansu Fati is just something special. Final question of the day. I don't get it why you signed Trent Alexander-Arnold when you've got Smedo with the same rating. Let's be honest, guys. We were lacking players in that right-back position. At one point, we had only Smedo as our full fit right back because Wage picked up an injury and that's why I feel like having another right back was needed and Trent Alexander-Arnold seemed like the perfect choice because he's only 21 and he's 83 rated at the moment but the sky is the ceiling for this lad and I can't wait to see how he improves and that's why I feel like he was the perfect signing for us. But that's the press conference wrapped up, let's move on. Who else but Leo Messi to win the Player of the Episode award once again. He scored a brace including a free kick in the last episode against Alaves and apart from that he scored against Real Madrid in the Clasico to send us through to the finals of the Spanish Super Cup. No wonder you guys voted for him as your Player of the Episode. A quick look at our season objectives before we move on with all the transfer stuff and that Spanish Super Cup final. In this episode, if I'm not wrong, the Spanish Cups should begin, which means Ansu Fati and Ricky Puig will have an opportunity to shine. Of course, more goals from Leo Messi will always be helpful. We've got to avoid losing to Atletico Madrid and hopefully we can see a Barcelona player pick up the Player of the Month award. Okay, so it is now time to discuss some transfer business and Bernardo Silva is number one on our agenda. It does seem like most of you guys want to see the Portuguese international play in Barcelona alongside the likes of Frankie de Jong and Arthur Melo. But at the same time, a lot of you guys were telling me that it's extremely unrealistic to make a signing of this caliber in the January transfer window. 
and you know what i agree with you guys so what we're gonna do is wait until next season and this is certainly a transfer i'll be on the lookout for because bernardo silva in our midfield i think will be unbelievable so we're gonna wait until then but i do have another transfer in mind a few months ago real madrid stole one of barcelona's most talented players from the academy in take fusa kubo the japanese sensation a lot of people have labeled him as the japanese messi and as I've said before in this series, bringing in youth talents is certainly a part of my agenda and I want to bring Kubo back to Barcelona. Now of course, this isn't a transfer that's going to impact us at all this season. We're barely going to use him now, but it is a player that I'm going to invest now for the future because I know this guy's got an unbelievable potential and also with the new dynamic player potential system, the sky is the limit for him. So for now though, I'm gonna scout him, we're gonna get to know his overall and check out some of his stats and then make a move. The good thing is, although Madrid won't negotiate with us, we can pay his release clause and get him for 9.9 .9 million, which shouldn't be much of a problem. Taking him back from Real Madrid is something I absolutely want to do. It's like getting one over your eternal rivals and that'd be brilliant. Honestly, I'm so glad that I checked the news section because I was about to miss this important piece of news. Messi grabs the December Player of the Month award, which is massive for the series. So we're going to be putting our transfer business aside because we've now got an important game against Atletico Madrid as we'll be facing them in the finals of the Spanish Super Cup. Press conference time before this massive game. What are your expectations from this Supercopa clash against Atletico? We'll do all we can to win. I'm going out there to win the trophy. How would you put your previous win into context against Atletico Madrid? So if you guys remember, our last game against Atleti was a really close one. And I'm going to say the players will do well again. We got one over them previously and we can do it again. Do you have anything special prepared? I'm just going to say we will play our usual football. I'm not going to be making any special tactical changes. We are Barcelona. The opposition makes changes to adjust to our play style. We are not messing about. I'm going with a full strength lineup against Atleti for this final. We've got Suarez, Messi, Griezmann up front, Arta Melo, De Jong and Busquets in our midfield. Alba, Longley, PK, and Smedo at the back with Mark Andre Ter Stegen in goal. I'm again putting faith in PK for this massive game against Atleti. We know these kind of games PK thrives on. And that is the Atletico Madrid team we're up against. Look at that. They've signed Alexandre Lacazette to replace Antoine Griezmann. That's actually a proper good replacement. Kieran Trippier, their new signing. They've got Marcus Llorente playing on the left, which is interesting. Saul is well in their midfield. That is a decent Atleti team. This is going to be a tough game. Here we go, guys. The Spanish Super Cup final has kicked off. A chance for us to win our very first trophy in this series. Atletico Madrid looking to pick up the pace and pushing forward. Here's Koke. Inside to Costa. Back to Koke. This is not looking good. Long clay comes in clutch with the block. Looks to be a corner with Koke whipping this one in. PK, come on, get it away. We do get it away. Not really as Atleti have a chance and it's in. Out of nowhere from a corner, Saul puts the ball in the back of the net. And Atletico Madrid are in the advantage in this final. This is not how I plan things to go. I mean, conceding an early goal to Atleti is problematic because we know how defensive they can be. But under 10 minutes, they've managed to take the lead. This is going to get tricky. Have a look at that replay. We did defend the corner, but then, well, it worked out perfectly for them to stay and couldn't keep the goal out. Antoine Griezmann sees Jordi Alba now. Alba waits. Griezmann makes the run in behind. Atleti's defense. Still Antoine Griezmann. Cut back inside to Luis Suarez. He's missed on the rebound. Puts it in. 15 minutes on the clock. And we've equalized. Luis Suarez coming up clutch with the goal. It is 1-1 and game on against Atleti. First things first. I have no idea how Suarez didn't score from the first attempt. But anyways, the rebound fell very kindly to the Uruguayan. And thankfully, he managed to convert that. One all, and I'm so glad we've managed to respond within six minutes of conceding. Luis Suarez now on the ball. Looks for Frankie de Jong as Barcelona are pushing forward. Now Messi. Messi sees Suarez who strikes it brilliantly, but Jan Oblak counters with a brilliant save. Messi Suarez looking up well. It seems like Luis Suarez is in the mood for this one. Atleti pushing forward now. Marcus Llorente finds Renan Lodi who tries to put it in. It's still Lodi. Oh, he's turned me there. Cross comes in. Gerard Pique had to be alert. Good clearance there from him, but the chance is not gone yet. Saul finds Costa. Costa shoots and bang. Wow. Atletico Madrid make it 2-1. Diego Costa is just lethal inside the box and he's just scored a brilliant goal. PK didn't even have time to react. I mean, have a look at this. Costa turns, left foot, bang. 
hits the post and in the back of the net. No chance for De Stegen as well. This is not going to be an easy game. Inside to Leo Messi. Messi looking to open up some space. Still Messi. Still Messi. I'm waiting for Alba to make a run. Alba has made the run. Can he keep it in? Yes, he can. Cross comes in. Griezmann on the volley. But uh, oh, Black saves. I mean, Griezmann connected with it decently. And that was a brilliant cross from Alba, but not enough to beat Jan Oblak. Cross comes in, Lacazette with the header. What was Gerard Piquet doing there? Like, why didn't he even challenge for it? That was awful from him. But anyways, um, Ter Stegen made the save. Half-time against Atleti and things certainly are not going according to plan. We're a goal down, it's 2-1 to them. And I want to try and get back into this game as soon as possible. As time goes on, we'll get even more nervous. I'm hoping for a quick second half goal. I'm making a couple of key changes for the second half. Fabian comes on for Busquets because I think we need a goal soon. And I need some attacking midfielders. And also I'm going to be bringing off Luis Suarez for Usman Dembele to inject a bit of pace into our attack. Finds Antoine Griezmann. Griezmann opens up some space, tries to finish it. Now it's Arta Melo. Arta calls it in and it's gone in. Arta Melo with an absolute golazo as Barcelona have equalized against Atleti. Come on, guys. That's a big goal from the Brazilian. And honestly, I didn't know Arta had this in his locker because the amount of times this season he's actually scored a goal like this is actually unreal. He's been really potent in front of goal. This was a sublime finish. One that Jan Oblak couldn't keep out and we know how good Jan Oblak is. And oh my goodness, Tempele almost injured Messi there. I don't know what's going on. But anyways, it is to all. Just the start of the second half I wanted. Cross comes in. Lacazette with the header. Come on, this is bullshit, man. Apologies for sweating, but I was just frustrated there. Atletico Madrid make it 3-2. Lacazette does his classic celebration. And you guys can see the Barcelona fan in the background frustrated. Because I certainly am. That kind of defending, it's just awful. Cross comes in. We just do nothing to clear it away. And, well, they've got the advantage once again. We'd worked so hard to make it 2 all. Here goes Jordi Alba pushing forward. We need him to provide something to this team now. Still Jordi Alba. Cut back. Antoine Griezmann. Oh, heavy touch. That's a chance we should have taken. It's now Usman Dembele looks to bring it inside. Finds Antoine Griezmann. Now Leo Messi back to Griezmann. Griezmann has broken through. Still Griezmann tries to not make the keeper and it's somehow gone in. Antoine Griezmann against his former side makes it 3-all. And he's going to do the respect celebration this time. 3-all against Atleti. This has been the most insane final I've actually played in a long time. Goal after goal. Attack after attack. It's been such an open game. A bit chaotic this one, but ultimately it doesn't matter. We've managed to get the ball in the back of the net. 3-all and now I've got to defend well. Oh, not good, guys. Already I've given away a chance to our opponents. What on earth is my defending? Where was Gerard Piquet? 4-3 Atletico Madrid. What even is this game? Like, come on. How bad can one be defensively? I mean, I need to take FIFA coaching lessons or something because, oh, look at Piquet, how he lost his marker. He's just too slow in this game. Oh, here we go, guys. One last chance in this game. Usman Dembele with the pace. This is it for us, guys. Dembele 1v1. Can he score? No! How did I miss that? He's bottled it, guys. Usman Dembele. We had one lifeline towards the end of that game to make it for all. But we couldn't. What a game of football, though. It, it sucks that we have to be on the losing side of this one, but... It is what it is. I kind of feel like Valverde now and Atletico Madrid are going to be lifting the Spanish Super Cup trophy. And you know what? There's only one man to blame for this result. Gerard freaking PK. I have no idea how he managed to put such a terrible performance. Like, honestly, he, he just doesn't mark any player in-game. He, he can't even win headers. I know this may sound harsh, but I guess his time here at this club is up. FC Barcelona could not pull level in the second half. Why is that? I'm just going to say we played well. It's not enough. We actually were shocking defensively. We were good offensively, but defensively, we were awful. Trust me, guys. I've tried finding reasons to keep Gerard Piquet, but I just can't. For some reason, he just doesn't feel good in game. And well, you guys know why that is. It's his space. It is just not good enough in FIFA 20. And that's why we are going to transfer list him and try and bring in another centre back. It just has to happen. I think there's only one man I feel that can replace Gerard Piquet at the back, and that is Koulibaly. I think he's going to be an absolute rock for us at the back. And once and if we get Gerard Piquet sold, this is the man I'm going to go after. 
and he's also 28 in his prime he's got the experience to of course lead our defense and i think a player of his quality would flourish at fc barcelona he's also a lot quicker than gerard pk but of course first we need to sell gerard pk and of course with us now going ahead and signing a center back instead bernardo silva's transfer will have to wait until next season just received a message from PK. I wanted to say that I was a bit surprised to hear that you wanted to sell me. I've really enjoyed my football here and I wanted to say that I wouldn't move if I had the choice. Now, I get PK has been a big legend here at the club. Possibly the greatest centre-back the club has had after maybe Carlos Puyol and Ronald Koeman potentially. But I really feel like his time at this club is up. We are Barcelona, not an old age home. We need to move on and that's exactly what we're doing with Gerard PK. And there you go, Man City have shown interest in buying Gerard Piquet for 36.8 million. I certainly want to negotiate to try and get a better deal. I really should have accepted that offer from Dortmund for 77 million. I don't know why I didn't. I think 36 is just way too less for a player of Gerard Piquet's quality. Let's counter with 48 million and just see what Man City come back and say. They're willing to pay 42.4. Let, let's make it 45 just to, you know, play with Guardiola and just, just get his opinion on a 45 million euros transfer. Come on, Pep, accept it. They're willing to pay 43.3. You know what? Let's just accept it and move on. So we've basically sold PK and we should have enough money to make probably a superstar signing at the back. And that got me thinking, instead of Koulibaly, why not go for another player in his absolute prime who is basically the best defender in world football at the moment, Virgil van Dijk. Now hold on you Liverpool fans, I know you guys are going to lose your shit right now, but I think van Dijk to Barcelona would be something else in this series. I mean, what a signing this could be. Now, he's got all the stats to be the perfect Barcelona defender. He's good on the ball. He's ridiculously quick. He's strong as well. He's got great passing stats. I mean, you can't really ask for more than Virgil van Dijk. So, let me know in the comment section if this is a transfer you guys want to see. These two are the options I guess I'm looking at. Koulibaly or Van Dijk. There's going to be a poll on the top right of your screen so that I can get your opinions in. Koulibaly, Van Dijk, let me know. It's a big decision now in this series. If you're still not convinced about me selling PK, this should explain things up. We've conceded 31 goals this season, which is just an obscene amount of goals to concede as a club like Barcelona. We are one of the worst defensive sides in La Liga. We're in the bottom five in terms of goals conceded. Our defense needs a change. But anyways, for now, we've got a game against Granada in La Liga, which I'm looking forward to. They're well, bottom of La Liga. This should be a routine game for us. Well, this seems like the perfect opportunity for us to rotate the squad and give some of the youngsters a chance. And that's why we've got the likes of Ansu Fati, Ricky Puig, Alenia, Konate all starting. Ansu Fati on the attack. The youngster controls it brilliantly with pace. He's moving forward. Stops. Back to Ricky Puig who turns. Inside now to Dembele. Shoots first time but straight towards the keeper. That's a big chance not taken. Difficult situation for us. Oh, brilliant challenge there from Konate. Something PK hasn't been able to do at all in this series. Good to see at least one of our defenders performing. Not looking good for us as Granada looks to push forward. This is not good. Konate comes clutch again with the block. I'm loving using him. Here goes Trent Alexander-Arnold pushing forward with pace. This is why we've signed him. Cut back to Dembele. Gets it on his left foot. Finesses this one. How has Rui Silva saved that? From that angle, Ansu Fati chipping this one for Junior Firpo, traps it well, inside to Lautaro, now it is Usman Dembele, turns and shoots and forces another save from Rui Silva, that was so lucky for the moment I thought that was going to go past the keeper, this keeper has been in unbelievable form so far. Oh, here's Vadilo pushing forward, puts in a cross, Umtiti does brilliantly and that was composure there, he had the pace to recover as well which was nice to see. Good pass, inside to Ricky Puig. Now it's Carlos Elenia on that left foot of his curls. This one, Rui Silva. No, just come on, man. Just let me score. He's making save after save. Oh, Granada pushing forward. The header. Oh, come on, Neto. You absolute god. I made a big defensive header there, not blocking the cross. And also, well, Titi was not in the right position, or even Konate for that matter. Neto saved us a goal there. Corner comes in. It should be ours. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, my goodness. Chaos at the back. Neto, what was that? I mean, he ultimately did help us out by making a double save, so we'll forgive him for, you know, that paddy. Oh, come on. Granada have the chance now to win this game, and they probably are going to. I'm just awful at FIFA 20, man. This is embarrassing. 
we took a risk by benching or you know substituting or resting a lot of our first team players and that, well that's not paid off at all it's backfired as Granada might be picking up a famous win at the Camp Nou. I'm just throwing a Hail Mary here because I'm bringing on Leo Messi, I'm bringing on De Jong as well, Ansu Fati playing in midfield, I've honestly got no idea what I'm doing but we've got to try something. Ansu Fati finds Lautaro Martinez, back to Ansu Fati, he's broken through, cuts this one back to Dembele, let's go, we've got ourselves one goal back, 86th minute of this game, Fati picks up the assist and well, we're back in it and there's a bit of hope. That's full time and we've dropped points. Embarrassing that we've actually dropped points against the worst team in Spain at the moment. One all. Ah, frustrating man. Extremely frustrating. Lucky to get a draw, weren't you? You know what I'm just gonna say? Luck is a part of the game because we did get lucky in that game. Well, this episode's not gone down well for us. I mean, now Junior at Firpo picking up an injury, pulled calf. He's going to be out for a couple of weeks. That's not good. And also, it seems like, and also, it seems like PK has lost his mind because this is what his reply is. Thanks for listening and giving me an extended run in the team. I'm much happier now. But, mate, I'm going to be selling you to Man City. What's he talking about? You know what? Let's just be a good dad and just say I'm proud of you. He's going to leave anyways. Okay, so we've got enough news about Takefusa Kubo and I guess it's time to pull the trigger and bring him back to Barcelona. So, I'm just going to be paying his release clause. There you go, 9.9 .9 million. And now we're going to bring the Japanese Messi back to Barca. Let's negotiate with him for his contract. So this is what I'm offering at Takefusa Kubo, the Japanese Messi. 400,000 in signing bonus, 40,000 in wages, prospect squad role and a 5-year contract length. Am I offering a bit too much? You know what? Let's make it 30,000. I guess that's a bit more fair. And let's just see his reply. And well, there you go. He's accepted that. 30,000 and of course 400,000 in signing bonus. Perfect. Anyways, you guys can have a quick look at his stats. This guy seems to be an amazing midfielder, although he comes out as a right mid or a center forward. I think he could be a great midfielder. He's quick, he's agile, he's got good stamina as well for that position. Great ball control, 84 dribbling as well. He's good on free kicks, short passing as well. And yeah, this guy seems to be the real deal and one of the players I would love to have at the end of this career mode as possibly a starter. So the draw for the round of 32 of the Spanish Cup has been made. So if you guys didn't know, they've changed the way this competition works. It's going to be one leg games until the final. I guess even the final will be a one leg affair. Round of 32, we've got a difficult draw against Athletic Bilbao. That's going to be exciting. Next episode is about to be insane because you guys have a huge decision to make between Koulibaly and Virgil van Dijk. Two quality centre-backs. One of them is basically the best defender in the world. It's up to you guys to decide who we should sign in case PK does leave and that's looking very likely. So next episode is about to be crazy. Possibly our biggest transfer of the series so far. And not just that, we've got a Spanish Cup away game which is important. We've got Valencia in La Liga and I really want to bounce back from that defeat to Atleti losing in the Spanish Super Cup because that's really triggered a bad run of form for us. A draw against Granada after that. We need to, you know, get back in form before we've got the big games coming up against Chelsea in the Champions League. Here's a quick look at our season objectives and I've got to say, this episode's been a bit of a disaster for this because look at this guys, we failed our first objective, Madrid is Blaugrana. We couldn't complete that guys, we lost to Atleti, at that time I didn't realise that we had failed an objective but we have and that is just so frustrating and also we could only get ourselves an assist with Ansu Fati in this episode so not much progress made but Messi did win another player of the month award which has certainly helped us out. So this is how the league table looks after that draw against Granada. Eibar are now just two points behind us, Atleti four, but Real Madrid with the game in hand and they can make it just two points between us both, so we are in a tricky spot in La Liga. Thankfully though, we're still league leaders. Because we were so bad in today's episode, there just isn't going to be a player of the episode award vote because we were awful. We lost one game, we drew the other and that's why there is not going to be a player of the episode vote for today's video. So guys, that is today's episode wrapped up. I know some of you guys are going to be disappointed that there's only one game in this episode but if I play this game against Athletic today, I'll probably lose. That's how bad I'm playing right now so we'll keep that for the next episode but really hope you guys are enjoying this series. Your support's been incredible. Let's keep it coming. 2000 likes would be brilliant. If you are new around here, subscribe for more FIFA content. Drop a follow on my Twitter and Instagram as well. Links will be in the description and I'll catch you guys next time.